Shall we just turn our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6? Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 to 4. I have taken from New King James Version. If you have it with you, please have it, open your Bibles. Otherwise, let's read from the overhead. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many of you have been enjoying that study or that journey through the book of Ephesians? Now, have you found, you know, something, you know, special in that book so far? Some scriptures which talked to you, which encouraged you, which changed you completely. No, Ephesians chapter 2 is something that spoke to me personally. Once you were dead in sins and trespasses. But God. That part I like. You know, but God. You were dead in sins, sins and trespasses. But God who loved us. Who is full of mercy and grace. Gave us a new life. That's what you know, touched me in that, special, in that chapter. You know, that's a very uh, close to my heart. That, that verse, those verses. Praise God for the wonderful book of Ephesians. So now as we are continuing in the book of Ephesians, um, we are reminded, Apostle Paul reminds us that you know, God has given us a new life. He changed our identity from what we used to be earlier, but he, and he made it as into a new creation. And it is nothing because of something we had done. It's because of his love and mercy that what we are today. And therefore God expects us to reflect that new character that we have received uh, to the people around us. You know, the scripture very clearly reminds us that you know, this reflecting this new character has to begin from our homes. And how do we reflect the new character that we have received beginning from our homes, from our families? Now we, need, we see that, you know, a husband reflects that new character to his wife. And the wife reflects that new character to his uh, husband, her husband. Then together, they reflect that new character to the people around them, including their children. Amen? So, that is how, you know, all these things work. But, you know, today, when we look around, there are many of these so-called Christians, when you ask them, who is Jesus? Their answer, you know, uh, uh, surprises us. I was watching a TV show the other day, and this particular person was saying uh, about Jesus Christ. He said, Jesus came to teach people you know, how to fish. That was the role of Jesus Christ. And people have, have to, I mean, it happens to be Christians. And there was in a, another place where we were sitting one time. Uh, uh, and when uh, youth were interviewed about Jesus Christ, who is Jesus? And one of the answer uh, a girl gave was like, you know, Oh, he's a cool dude who lived a long time back. That is the way, you know, people see Jesus Christ as. Now, the question is, how do you see Jesus Christ? Who is Jesus to you? That is the question, you know. We need to ask ourselves, who is Jesus to me? Who is Jesus to my family? What he has done for you? We just sang about his amazing love. That love of Jesus Christ, which transformed us. Even when we were in sins and trespasses. We were dead in sins and trespasses. The love of Jesus Christ brought a transformation uh, to our life. So, what I understand here is, you know, it's basically the teaching or the training that we receive and when we are young, you know. All this has to happen or begin from every household. We have to train our children in the right way to uh, uh, go. We should teach them, you know, who is Jesus Christ is. We should bring them to the love of Jesus Christ. We should... Uh, uh, make it clear to them who Jesus Christ is and what he has done for us. Then definitely the day the Holy Spirit touches the, hit them, they will invite Jesus into their life. So parents have the responsibility to lead their children to Jesus Christ and train them to reflect that new person that, that is in them. Am I making sense here? Yeah. So it is the responsibility of every adult here, every person here, Bible says, you know, uh, we all have been saved. We all have received the great commission. If you have received the great commission, what is expected of you? 
go and talk to talk about that to the people who are living in darkness freely you received the salvation tell others about the salvation the good news think about it you know we say gospel is the good news gospel is the power of god unto salvation to anyone who believes it's the good news a person now you just believing in the death of a person how can it save us that's the love of god that's a mystery something which is beyond our understanding god came down to the earth and changed our identity and died on our behalf and gave us a new life and he gave and he he lifted us into the heavenly place and seated us along with jesus christ and he said you know from now onwards everything is under the authority of jesus christ and because you are the body of christ remember everything is under your control authority as well he changed us totally so we need to recognize that and live accordingly amen so it has to start from every every household that in you know, a parent should uh, teach and uh, uh, help them to go forward now while the time you know when apostle paul was writing this it is possible that there was this attitude of rebellion in every families rebellion or you know whatever was happening in the family or disrespect in was happening in the family and there could be a reason you know for all this now i would say you know many times we parents are responsible for the uh, the wrong attitudes of of the children look at the verse uh, chapter 6 verse 4 it says fathers do not provoke your children to wrath many times you know knowingly or unknowingly parents provoke their children now children don't laugh i'm coming to your section also later on you know okay i'll be talking to you also so many times knowingly or unknowingly we know we Uh, ill treat them we get angry with them we just you know treat them you know in a not in the right manner and what happens you know uh, they feel uh, left out have you ever felt that way you know oh this daddy is, or mummy is always you know uh, supporting my brother or my sister they are always against me they don't give me anything let me just tell you it's not because of that probably you know uh, it's out of you know that the the situation the, the the pressure of the situation you know they must it that must have made them to speak in a different way or whatever but anyway they love you very much i just want to tell you children parents love you very much so this attitude of rebellion possibly was there at that time also but you know if you look at you know today's uh, society the same thing is being repeated even now as well right children are thinking you know oh my dad does not know anything my mom does not know anything i know how to uh, handle um, a smartphone she does not know anything yeah we have come over all these things but now we are letting you handle all these things children remember this we know how to do all this but we are just taking a, a back seat and letting you go forward we are helping you to come forward that's what we are doing you doing here so fathers many times provoke their children you know i was uh, listening to a, a, a person one time and he was sharing a story with me there was this boy pastor's son he was rebellious he does not go to church he does not respect those in authority when asked why he said are you telling me to follow my father's god i don't want to the attitude of the parents the way they live you know they have double standards you know they have a mask when they come into the church when they are outside they are, they are different the way they treat people the way they behave the way, the way they talk they are watching you remember children are watching us very carefully maybe they are very small but they are watching us and they will follow everything they will practice everything in that in, the, in their life so this child said you know i don't want to follow my uh, father's god i don't want my father's religion so what i am trying to say here many times we are responsible for the wrong attitude of the, our children so what should be the primary concern of uh, every father a father should be the spiritual head of that home his, his primary concern should be the well-being of his family his children his wife there are different ways in which you know, a, a child grows up he grows up or he or she grows up physically spiritually mentally and socially 
when they are growing up you know physically we have to provide them food shelter and clothing for their uh, spiritual growth we have to feed the feed their inner man every parent remember this we have to feed their inner man we have to give them the right teaching so that you know they can grow uh, uh, to be what they are, have to be then we have to help them to become a, a perfect social being you know uh, in the community the, the someone who respects and honors others so it all begins from every home how children are taught in every household you know, many times you know we see children misbehaving and parents sitting as if you know i don't care we have seen that many times right and those times you know we felt angry with the parents why are they not disciplining their children the the basic teaching begins from every home let me just tell you you know if you want to lo- learn more about uh, uh, the parenting there's a class going on parenting class get involved in that you will learn more about you know teach bringing up our children in a godly way in a christian way so it should begin from every home and fathers play a major role they play the role of a priest in every family we teach them the word of god we guide them according to the biblical truths and principles many times when i said you know fathers it could be father or mother it can be parents it is either one of us our attitude provokes our children to wrath now what is the outcome of you know uh, such an attitude or, or, or provoking a child colossians chapter 3 verse 21 says fathers provoke not your children to anger lest they be discouraged provoking a child to anger can de- de- uh, destroy their lives it can destroy them totally it can bring a feeling of you know uh, uh, uh rejected or you know being neglected or you know being i am not of value to them that can you know take them away from the love of christ that brings you know hatred in the in them that brings anger in them our attitude many times you know uh, uh discourage our children we provoke our children to anger what is the meaning of provoke provoke means to irritate or stir up a feeling of anger so what all what are the things that we do to irritate or provoke them and just punishment unwanted words neglecting them all these are you know, some of the examples you know we we knowingly or unknowingly we do in our families right in our house such things you know can provoke a child and it can you know stir up a child's emotions and make them irritated and be angry and get angry so what happens to that that can affect a child emotionally and make them discouraged now what is the meaning of discouraged discouraged means to demoralize a person and make them lose confidence or let's say self confidence so think about this you are saying all the negatives to your child every time he comes back home with you know uh, uh, the uh, the mark list the mark report the exam you know report what is your uh, response you could have done better yes that is okay but you start comparing that child with you know the people uh, the, the his uh, friends you start talking bad about them probably you know they lost only half a mark or one mark you make a big issue out of that you know we it, sometimes you know we take things for granted you know we think it is okay to say like that but you know children they get hurt they get hurt and they feel like you know i am not you know they don't care about me many times our attitude are responsible for the wrong behavior of our children parents have to be careful to distinguish between what a child must learn on their own and was what must be enforced as a rule in every family therefore in every family there should be a, a, a rule or a code of conduct now we should start beginning to teach you know our children from the very young age how you sit at the dining table how you sit for the prayers how you respect elders all these things has to be outlined in every family you know and today you know it has become a habit you know for children to come with their smartphones to the dining table while you are having food children does not have time to talk to the parents they are always concentrating on the phones mobile phones 
what happens that connection in the family that love in the family it's it's going their focus is more on other things try to correct them you will see what happens seriously you know sometimes you have to exercise your authority as a parent as a man of god as a woman of god as the leader in every family we need to exercise that authority many of us you know past that age of uh, correcting our children but still you can do that because still you are their parent your father and mother if you see you know something wrong in their life start exercising the authority you have in the name of jesus christ because the name of jesus christ works it's not you know what you say the name of jesus christ moves and works and brings about that uh, a deliverance or healing or victory in the name of jesus so we should make it clear to every child you know how they should be behaving in every family it should be made known to them you know in advance not after you know make, they make some mistakes after they make some mistakes you know they should not come and correct them but it should be made known to them then you have to correct them or you have to punish them as well you know look at uh, the same cha- verse ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 the second part of that verse in you know, it says how to bring up our children bring them up in the training and admonition of the lord do not provoke a child but we have to bring them up in the training and the admonition of the lord now what is training training is the process of teaching a person a particular skill or behavior it's like you know making them do certain things so they can uh, be perfect on that training is asking them to do something we all train our children right make your bed when they wake up in the morning make your bed clean your room do your homework simple things you know these are the way in which you know we are training our children for example uh, from childhood we have been taught that you know whenever you see someone who is elderly someone who is older you must respect them we used to stand up in you know, a whenever someone who is elderly comes into our room we will stand up we will give them a place to sit and then we will sit down we will be careful in you know, the way we speak to those people all these things begins from every household and parents play a major role in that now what is the purpose of all these things training to increase their knowledge and skills so that they can function well on their own we are helping them to stand on their feet parents do that many times you know what happens is like uh, i remember early days when our children were going for avana many used to think you know oh, the avana teachers will teach our children they will be responsible for the behavior of our children when children misbehaves this t- these parents you know go and talk to the avana leaders he is not like this he is not behaving that way why are you not correcting him they are just you know helping your children to grow in the in jesus christ their no, role is not to correct them or discipline them it is your responsibility parents to discipline and and you know train up your children in the right way so don't complain you know when uh, uh, th- uh, ch- your children are misbehaving it's because of you you did not take up your responsibility as a parent that's why scripture says in proverbs 22 verse 6 train up a child in the way he should go even when he is old he will not depart from it it has to begin from early ages training begins from home it is the responsibility of the parents not the sunday school teachers you know training sometimes involves uh, disciplining sometimes you know it needs some punishment and sometimes we need to reward them as well look at proverbs chapter 23 verse 13 and 14 says do not withhold discipline from a child if you punish them with a rod they will not die physical discipline will save them from death we have to punish them sometimes you know unlike you know many cultures when you try you speak to them about you know punishing them they will say i'll call the authorities i'll call the police i will sue you no that is not you know the way the bible teaches us we have to be rooted in the word of god the word of god very clearly reminds us that we have to discipline our children sometimes it is with a rod a stick we have to hit them you know it's no no see when you are puni- uh, correcting them or punishing them you should not punish them as you know they are your enemy because you love them 
Discipline is for the welfare and correction. Whereas punishment is to inflict pain so as to modify certain attitudes and behavior in a person. That all begins from every home. Then comes, it says, uh, we have to bring them up in the training and the admonition of the, of the Lord. What is admonition? Admonition means, you know, training by words, speaking to them the right words in a nice manner. You know, sometimes you hear, you know, uh, mothers shouting and screaming at their children. Have you ever heard? Have you ever come across that? I would say, you know, there's a miracle in a mother screaming and shouting. It transforms the children's, you know, uh, ways. It's a blessing many times. They should, they should be corrected. And sometimes, you know, we have to correct them. So what am I saying here? It is an advice. What is admonition? Admonition is an advice for encouragement or warning. It is to convey a message and make them understand. That's what, you know, the, the purpose of admonition is. It's not to say, you know, let it go into your thick head, you know, something, you know, we say with our mouth many times. You, this and that, we call, you know, un unwanted names, you know, sometimes chil children and say, let it go deep into you. No, that's not is, which is expected of us. Bible says, you know, bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. In other words, it says, bring up your child in a right relationship with the Lord. We have to, it is our responsibility. It has to begin from every family. Parents, look at the example of Job. Bible says, you know, whenever he felt that his children did something wrong, he went and knelt before the Lord. He offered sacrifices and he asked for forgiveness. He carefully prayed for his children. Parents, how many of you carefully pray for your children? How many of you go down on your knees and ask the Lord to move in their lives? Look at uh, Genesis chapter 49. It talks about Jacob blessing his children. He called them one by one. They all came to him. What did he do? He laid hands on them. He blessed them and prophesied over his children. You know, just speaking a blessing upon our children matters a lot. Have you ever done, done that or did that? We need to practice that. Speak life. Bible says, you know, the life and death are in the power of our tongues. Speak life. Speak life to your children. Speak life into their situation. Many, sometimes, you know, they are worried. They may be depressed. Speak life. Release the word of God into their situations. And, and prophesy over them and say that the Lord is with you. The Lord will help you. When you start prophesying, you know, this is something, uh, as we start exercising this gift of prophecy, we can see that, you know, the Lord will start moving. In. Initially, you know, we may have to struggle a little bit. But we will see, you know, the Lord start, will start, start speaking to, through us. The Holy Spirit will enable us to speak the right words at the right time, which I have experienced many times. Many times when I have said that, People have come to me and said, yes, brother, that was the right word for me. And I'm going to, through that situation in my life. And I needed that. I was like that. That helped me to correct myself. Speak life. Encourage them. Prophesy over your children. So we need to carefully pray for our children. So let me just summarize this portion before we go to the next one. So this is the message to fathers or other parents. Remember, children imitate their parents. So parents should be careful about their attitude and their behaviors. Number two, children should be taught to honor God. Honor their elders. Honor their parents. When you know it happens from the home, it will uh, uh, spread to the surroundings, the people around them. And then remember this, every punishment to a child must be out of love, not because they are your enemy. Hebrews 12 says, you know, the Lord punishes those he loves and those he accepts as a child. Parents punish their children because, you know, they love them. Because they are their children. And lastly, parents must pray for and with their children. Make it a practice. Standing with your children and praying with them. Like I said, pronounce a blessing upon them. Lay hands upon your children and bless them. He says in verses 1 to 3, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. 
children in the lord he is speaking to children in the lord something which began from every family a, the when the parents fulfill their responsibility as the priest in the family children will be led in the right way children who are in the lord the greek word used for children is technon now who what is the meaning of that any child who is living in full submission and obedience to their parents is a child in other words we can say those who are living under uh, one roof with their parents under the uh, uh, supervision of their parents even though you know it is a uh, return to them i would i still believe you know it is it is applicable to each one of us as well who have married and you know moved out of our homes it is applicable to us we have to respect our parents you know we have to respect them and care for them as long as they are alive every person should be care, should care about their parents the bible teaches us so i heard you know one person say one time and that person is you know uh, married and has a, a family of their own and you know one day he was saying i still take care of my parents i support them i provide for them i thought what is so what is so great in that you and i are supposed to do that it is our responsibility your parents brought you up so far they spent all their uh, uh, youth energy and their life to bring up you to give you the right education to show you the right way now you are somewhere and you are something now you say i still care for my parents you are supposed to do that it is your responsibility as a child of god any child who lives in full submission and obedience to their parents will always take care of their parents they will never complain they will never grumble you and i need to take up that role which god has given to us you know these days you know the culture is like this 18 20 they finish their education find a job they move out and now they have become you know a separate entity they don't even uh, know their uh, uh, siblings or you know even their parents or loved ones they are like in a different country itself that is not what you know the bible expects us to be we are social beings we are put in a family where the lord himself uh, has placed parents over us we are the children we have is given to us for a season and parents have to take care of them and give them back to the lord and children remember that they are representing god so they need to uh, love and submit to their parents obey your parents ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 and 2 say obey your parents honor your father and mother two attitudes a child should be having what is that obedience and honoring now what is the meaning of obey submit to the authority and act according according to what you have been asked to do obedience always has an action you know obedience is an action word do something do this and that it has an action whereas honor is an attitude of the heart to show respect to someone see for example you know when uh, we are asked to do something why do we do it it's just because you know someone asks you to do it you do it or you because you know you respect that person you honor that person you do it out of your uh, love and concern uh, you do it especially our parents you know when they ask you to do something are you grumbling and doing it you know you know, we know children how they be- behave you know go and prepare your room what they will do <laughs> why me why always me yeah? and they will go and do something and get out of that room right i remember you know when we were asked to uh, use a sweep our room those days there was no vacuum cleaner when we were small we were given a, a, a broom and say go and clean your room what we'll do we'll just you know where you can see we'll put it all under the bed <laughs> it's all hidden and we grumble you know those days why me why it has to be me then our mom you know she has to come and take it all out of that when you obey someone you will have an attitude of your heart that i love that person i respect that person it's out of your love your obedience you are doing that because you belong to the lord every family should teach their children that they belong to the lord 
and they have to reflect the new character which they have received in Jesus Christ we are a new creation we said you know anyone who is living under one roof with the parents uh, uh, is you know uh, our children or living in a full submission to their parents now then uh, if it is so then who is a child of god someone who is living in full submission to the holy spirit and the lord he is a child of god allowing the holy spirit to move in our lives so obedience is uh, an action word whereas honor is the attitude of our heart so why should children obey their obey and honor their parents number 1 obey your parents because you belong to the lord children obey your parents in the lord or we can say you know because you belong to the lord amen you know god has established in you know, a certain authority in every family father mother and then children and parents represent god to them and you know in the book of ephesians as i said earlier in chapter 2 it says uh, we have been created new and he made us new and he is expecting certain things from us what is that good works a good works are the reflection of that new nature in us it's out of our obedience and honor to the lord as a new creation reflect the new nature of jesus christ in us the best example is jesus christ himself when he was in this world you know he lived in perfect submission and obedience to his uh, uh, earthly parents after he stepped into the ministry he was living in full submission to the heavenly father that is the example we have before us the ultimate example i can say so live a life of obedience and living you know such a life is not easy living in obedience is not easy it is something we need to practice Submit, submitting to someone is not easy the first few days you know when you get into a new job it's easy you know to uh, submit to, to the people around you after you get familiar with them probably they are senior to you but you think you know uh, by age they are younger to younger to you they have a higher position in the office you will start complaining oh, this boy he does not know anything this girl she does not know anything i am more experienced that person but we fail to for- recognize and respect the people in authority we fail to remember the fact that we are the children of god we are in the lord paul said you know it is no longer i live but it is christ who lives in me and through me we are reflecting the character and uh, nature of jesus christ because you belong to the lord we need to live a perfect life in obedience and submission number 2 why should children obey and honor their parents because it is the right thing to do obey your parents because it is a it is right in the sight of god obedience is right because it is a command from the lord it's an instruction from the lord it is right because obedience is the way through which we say we love you lord obedience helps us to develop self discipline helps every child remember children obedience helps you to develop self discipline it is the right thing to do whenever when your parents ask you to do something learn to obey that because they represent god to you god has placed them in authority over you you have to submit to them next slide please this is something in a way i liked very much in colossians chapter 3 verse 20 why should children be obeying their parents and i took a translation from malayalam children always obey your parents for this pleases the lord that's what you know the english bible says but you know in the malayalam translation it says it is well pleasing to see that kind of attitude in the disciples of jesus it makes sense right what kind of attitude in a child the the kind of attitude that will honor respect obey and submit it is well pleasing to the lord to see that kind of attitude in every disciple of jesus christ not only in children in every one of us submit to those in authority learn to respect those who are elderly to us obey your parents in the lord for this is right honoring our parents is a command from the lord honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with promise remember you know the 10 commandments it is mentioned about you know you have to honor your father and mother training up a child begins from every home 
unless pa as parents you and i take the responsibility all the, the role of teaching and training them what is the outcome of that they will they will have not only 10 commandments more than that so to honor our parents means to be respectful in words and action to respect them not only in your words it's in our actions also to obey and honor means to obey parents with the right attitude of the heart we saw that earlier right obedience is an action word honoring is the as attitude of our heart so obey and honor means to obey them with the right attitude of the heart it brings it's it has a promise of long life you know other day uh, i was reading a news a child uh, or a, a young girl when uh, her parents uh, confronted her on uh, something and she started you know making up stories about the parents and she went to the police after that and she filed a complaint against the parents and uh, the police came and uh, made some inquiry and found out that you know, it's just because you know the parents were correcting her or disciplining her she made up this story it all happens in, in these days you know in every many households why because they have not been given the right training in the beginning children remember this is not a, a, a simple thing you know to stand against your parents and talk against them there are many great consequences on that when you are against your parents in fact you know honoring our parents is a command from the lord the one the lord gave to uh, moses said you know give it to the people then you will live a long full life in the land the lord god your god is giving you you will live a blessed life you will live a peaceful life now look at the, if you can connect those things you know what i have put on the screen there the one in blue is giving us the instruction you know uh, honor your father and mother obey the instructions of your father and you will be my servants now, the blessings are there in in the red you will live a long life a long full life when you are obeying the instructions of your father what happens you will your clan or you will be my servants and you will never die out see connect that with you know you will live a long life maybe you will die early probably but you know uh, but our generations will never be forgotten if uh, if um, i say chapter 61 says that you know the world will say they are the children of god when they look at them your name will be carried over it will never die out and then exodus 20 20 verse 6 says if you are careful to love and obey all my commandments i will lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations a god who blesses us for thousand generations make sure that we love respect honor our elders our parents the people around us reflecting the character of jesus christ go to the next slide please obey and honor your parents it because it brings blessings obey and honor your parents because it brings blessings that's what i exactly mentioned in verses 1 to 3 ephesians chapter 6 obedience is a sign of respect and honor and it will result in the blessings of the lord now when you read uh, the book of uh, deuteronomy you can see you know, in many chapters uh, it is mentioned if you obey this i will bless you if you do this i will bless you if you are careful i will bless you in many chapters the lord is speaking to the israelites then it it all you know ends up in one chapter in chapter 28 it says like this you know in verses 1 1 and 2 it says if you are careful to obey the lord and follow his commands then he will set us high above the nations of the earth and the blessings of the lord shall overtake us when you are careful to obey all the instructions of the lord let me just remind you one more time children it all began from obey your parents honor your parents submit your parents obedience has great blessings blessings of overflowing blessings i would rather say the, the blessings of the lord shall 
overtake us you don't even you know understand you may not even see you know things how things move in your life how blessings comes into your life now let me just give you a warning to every child parents maybe you can you know take a screenshot of this and frame it and keep it in your house <laughs> look at exodus chapter 21 verse 15 says consequences of disobeying parents death is the punishment for attacking your father and mother oh children remember this death is the punishment for attacking your father and mother i you know we came across a family some time back they asked for prayers one time we went there couple of us went we were praying for them and the issue was their son was actually physically uh, uh, assaulting or abusing the the parents he was taking his hand and hitting them he was actually possessed we went we prayed and he was delivered after that death is the punishment for attacking your father or mother leviticus 20 verse 9 says anyone who dishonors father or mother must be put to death <laughs> such a person is guilty of capital offense i never knew you know such verses were there in the bible <laughs> and until i know i was preparing this now listen to the last one proverbs chapter 30 verse 17 children be careful okay the eye that mocks a father and despises a mother's instructions will be plucked out by ravens of the valley and eaten by vultures oh my god children be careful okay the word of god very clearly reminds us that we need to respect we need to honor we need to submit to our parents because that is an instruction from the lord and the word of god very clearly reminds us there's a blessing when we submit to the authority of the, our our parents we should not even you know this is a lesson to uh, uh, the people who are married as well we have to remember not to raise our voice against our parents not to talk wrong against them and not to uh, disgrace them in any any way so let me just close down this uh, message with this obeying and honoring our parents is not an option but it's an ins- it is an instruction from the lord obeying our and honoring our parents is right in the sight of the lord because it's a command from him and he takes pleasure when we do that it will lead to a long and prosperous life it will result in god's blessings it will release parental blessings on us so let's take this decision this morning as we uh, leave this place that we will not be what we used to be anymore but we will be people who will be reflecting the character of jesus christ that that new nature that we have received through our faith in jesus christ we will be someone who will live in submission to our parents we will be someone who will be honoring them we will be someone who will be respecting them we will be someone who will be taking care of them let's pray father yes lord we have taken for granted many times our parents and even our children lord we thought you know they will always be there with us we have many times you know spoken or treated them in not in the right way we have looked down upon them many times father this morning we ask you lord to forgive us forgive us of anything that anything that is wrong in your sight because lord the word of god reminded us this morning that obeying them is is pleasing in your sight it is the right thing for you lord in your sight lord father help us to live that life of obedience and honoring our parents and not only that lord even to the people around us lord those who are elderly all those who are weaker lord reflecting the true nature of jesus christ because you gave yourself though you are god you did not hold on to that position you came down to this earth you humbled yourself and you died like a sinner like a thief on the cross so that we can have life and lord you said you have set an example for us to follow that when you were wrongly accused you did not threaten them you did not even do anything against them instead you gave everything into the hands of god 
who can judge fairly father this morning we submit ourselves into thy hands o lord and lord help us to take care of every wrong things in our lives and set right every affairs in our lives and walk as what you expect us to be lord as the true sons and daughters of god we just praise you master for this morning we bless you lord in jesus name we pray